When we've studied calculus in the past, there's many different geometric notions that we're interested in. For example, the slope of a tangent line, the area under a curve, the arc length of a curve. But when we did calculus before, we were always doing it for curves of the form y is a function of x. But now what we want to do is repeat a lot of that, but in the context of a parametric curve. So instead of y as a function of x, you have x as a function of t and y a function of t, that both of the coordinates are functions of an independent parameter we normally call t. So, for example, in this particular graph, we've got x of t is t squared and y of t is t cubed minus 3t, so this is a parametric curve, and what we see is that we have a tangent line to that curve at some point, so the question is, what is the equation of that tangent line? Now, one of the things that becomes apparent when you start studying parametric curves is that it's actually a bit richer than it used to be in the past. So, for example, let me consider the tangent line specifically at this point x equal to 3 and y equal to 0. Now, what's interesting about this 3, 0 point is that, well, there's this one tangent line here. Imagine I go all the way around the loop, and what you're going to see is there's actually a second tangent line at that particular spot. That is to say that at this 3, 0, we have a sort of cross behavior, that there's two different tangent lines that both could be written down. This is a richness that occurs for parametric curves, but didn't occur when they were all written y as a function of x, where they had to pass a vertical line test. This clearly is going to fail a vertical line test. So, what can we do? Well, let me consider an arbitrary x of t and a y of t, some parametric curve. Now let me consider the chain rule applied to dy dt. Because x is an intermediate variable here, the y depends on x, but then the x depends itself on t, I can apply the chain rule, and what I get is a dy dx dx dt. And if I rearrange this formula, it's going to become nothing but dy dx is the quotient of dy dt by dx dt. At least this is going to be true in the scenario where the dx dt is non-zero, where the denominator is non-zero. So this gives me a formula to compute dy dx, which is the slope of the tangent line. If I know my x of t and my y of t, I take their derivatives and take a quotient. So for example, in the curves that we were studying before this x of t is t squared, and this y is t cubed minus 3t. If I want to compute dy dx, it's just going to be this quotient. In the numerator, you get the y prime, which is 3t squared minus 3. In the denominator, you get 2t. And if I want to, I can just clean it up a little bit of algebra, 3 halves t minus 1 over t. So this tells me the slope of the tangent line at some specific value of t. Well, let's use this in the larger context of the problem. So here's the same curve I have, and I've put up the two different tangent lines. And my question is, what are the equations of the tangent lines at this point 3, 0? And we can visually see that there's going to be two of them. Well, the first thing we need to do is figure out, well, hold on. If x is 3 and y is 0, what's the value of t at this point? And we can actually just plug this into the formula. So x of t is known to be t squared. If I set that equal to 3, that's going to tell me that t is equal to plus or minus root 3. Now, this is actually enough, but let's just do a quick check and see if it worked out for y as well. So y, I could factor as t times t cubed minus 3. If I set that equal to 0, remember y is 0 in this point, 3, 0, then I get either t equal to 0 or, again, t is plus or minus root 3, the same plus or minus root 3 we had before. The case when t is equal to 0, by the way, that's going to represent the 0, 0 point in my curve. So the argument here is that this specific case where x is equal to 3, that has two different values of t that represent that. You hit it once and then you sort of go around the loop and you hit it a second time at a different value of t. So now let's take those t values and plug them into the slope that we computed out before. Recall that when we looked at what, say, the derivative dy dx was, we got this 3 halves t minus 1 over t. Now I'm going to evaluate it first at t equal to the positive square root of 3. Plug that number and I get this. I see this root 3 in the numerator. I want to get a common denominator, so I'm going to rewrite that as 3 over root 3. Then if I look at the numerators, there's a 3 minus 1, which is just going to be the same thing as a 2 thirds. The 2's cancel, and then it's 3 over root 3. I can replace that just with root 3. All right, same story for plugging in t equal to minus square root of 3. You can plug that in and you get minus square root 3 as well. Oh, by the way, it's just a complete coincidence that when you have t equal to root 3, the output is root 3. When you have t equal to minus root 3, the output is minus root 3. That's just a coincidence of this particular problem. 
Regardless, what I'm now going to do is try to figure out, well, I have the slope, but what about the equations? So let me remind you that the equation of a tangent line is given by the point-slope formula. If I have a specific point, x0, y0, that's been chosen, then if I know what the slope, the m value is, I can plug it into this y minus y0 is m, x minus x0 formula, and that's going to give me the equation of a tangent line. So here the x0 is the 3 and the y0 is the 0, and then the m is either plus root 3 or minus root 3. So if I plug those into the formula, I get these two different equations, y equals minus root 3 times x minus 3, and y is equal to plus root 3 times x minus 3. Final note, remember that dy dx, I could apply the chain rule except in that scenario where dx dt was equal to 0. But what happens at that point? When dx dt was equal to 0, this is when t equal to 0, and that occurs at this point, the 0, 0 that we have over here. Well, that's where you have a vertical tangent. So in this video, we've managed to go and take the problem of finding equations of tangent lines, which we knew well how to do in Calculus 1, and extend that to parametric curves.